Welcome to Pearly Gates, Chapter 1, a unique superhero epic audio drama written and with art created by me, Dobbat. Now, on to the Chapter 1. Troy Turner, a 23-year-old Asian American, stands at 6 foot 2 and very muscular, sitting alone in a dimly lit 8x8 concrete cell. He wears an orange jumpsuit and pants with a white tank top underneath. The walls are lined with small but elaborately detailed diagrams of assault rifles, pistols, and ammunition. Attached to his walls with gum that he stole from the cafeteria. Evidence of Troy's relentless planning and preparation for this very day. Troy paces back and forth like a caged animal, walking his cell's perimeter and memorizing the intricate drawings. His eyes are alert, scanning for any opportunity to escape. Tonight is the night. The lost ten years of his life are flashing before his eyes every moment, and he needs to escape. In this moment, he ponders where his mother is, if she's safe, and if he even has any hope to save himself. His bare feet feel the cold concrete underneath him, making him feel uneasy with every step. He thinks to himself, I need to do this all in one night. If they inspect me in the morning and see a scar in my neck or see that a guard never clocked out, I'm done for. After what feels like an eternity, Troy sees an armed guard passing by the bars during his hourly patrol. Troy moves with startling speed, calling out to get the guard's attention. Hey, uh, someone stole my shower shoes, Troy loudly shouts. As soon as the guard turns, Troy pounces from the shadows and grabs him in a chokehold between the bars. The guard struggles violently, but Troy's strength is inhuman. Troy slowly whispers into his ear, counting each second that passes by. After a grueling thirty seconds, the guard loses consciousness. Troy drags the guard's limp body as far into the cell as he can between the small gap and the bars, holding the guard's hands together tight. With focused determination, he is able to get the keys from the right side pocket of the guard, which luckily had a small pocket knife keychain attached. After slowing his breathing and lowering his natural defenses, Troy violently digs the short two-inch blade into the scar in his neck, gritting his teeth as he ruthlessly rips the bloody control chip from under his skin. Immediately, Troy's demeanor changes, becoming more feral and empowered. The colors of his eyes become a more healthy and vibrant hue. The cell door suddenly bends and contorts before his might. Troy peers out from his cell into the dimly lit hallway, the mangled bars twisted open wide enough for him to slip through. He then grabs the guard's pistol from his incapacitated body and unhinges his jaw, devouring the gun and its magazine full of ammunition in mere seconds. Troy lets out an animalistic roar. He will soon be free. Emergency alarms blaring through the halls as red lights flash overhead. Troy slithers out, stepping over the crumbled pieces of metal. He moves stealthily down the hall, pressing himself flat against the concrete walls whenever he hears approaching footsteps. At a hallway intersection, Troy spots a supply closet. He uses one of the keys he stole earlier to get inside. Under the bare bulb's harsh glare, Troy hurriedly strips off his bright orange jumpsuit quietly releasing the Velcro straps to avoid detection. He changes into a dark security guard uniform, holding tight across his bulging biceps and broad shoulders. Troy emerges from the supply closet, jaw clenched, trying to exude the heroic confidence that he doesn't truly feel. As he approaches the common area, the sounds of the raging riot reach him. Angry shouting, the bodies of adults and children alike slamming violently into the slate-gray concrete walls, tables being flipped over and crashing loudly. Troy pauses just outside the large room, taking a deep breath. He reminds himself that this is not hell or prison, and that these aren't simple inmates. Like him, these people were brought to this facility as children experimented on, and enhanced even beyond what their original powers gave them. Their emerging powers were honed for combat, then suppressed via technology in order to control them. Troy prepares himself and steps into the common area, freezing at the chaotic scene unfolding before him. The guards look utterly overwhelmed trying to contain the depowered prisoners running amok. 
Every attempt to use their powers administers a stronger and more painful electric shock toward the top of their spine. But these prisoners continue to fight through the pain just for a chance at escape. Like Troy, many of them have been here for years being groomed as children to be soldiers and have lost their sense of connection to the outside world. Troy looks between the barely open double doors to see a bold, muscular man with pale, unhealthily discolored skin, letting out an inhuman screech as bony spikes burst out from his forearms, shredding his sleeves. Troy recalls the man's nickname Spike in his head. With every movement, Spike is clearly fighting against the electrical surges of the chip inside of his neck. Using all the force his lanky yet muscular frame can muster, he impales a guard through the chest, lifting him off the ground. The jagged bone spikes protruding from his arms are each over a foot long, wet with blood. The guard wails in agony, legs flailing helplessly as more blood trickles down the razor-sharp protrusions. Coming to Spike's aid, a hulking prisoner named Kong transforms with a guttural roar. His enormous frame swells as muscles bulge and ripple beneath his skin. Coarse brown fur rapidly sprouts across his arms and back. Kong's neck thickens as his jaw juts out, face elongating into an ape-like shape. His eyes glow fiery orange and fangs push down from his upper jaw. Kong grabs a vending machine, veins throbbing under the fur on his massive arms. He lifts it overhead and hurls it at the guards. They dive out of the way just before it demolishes the concrete wall behind them. Spike charges at Troy, bone spikes aimed at his chest. At the last second Troy sidesteps and grabs Spike's arm, using his own momentum to flip him up and over onto his back. Spike turns to Troy, pointing a spike at his uniformed chest with a scowl. You one of them gatekeepers? Here to lock us freaks up again? Kong pounds his massive fists together, brick walls of fur-covered muscle rippling. Gate man looks small, Kong crush, he rumbles in a bassy voice. Troy raises his hand slowly. Whoa, fellas, I'm just trying to escape this concrete hellhole, same as you, Troy proclaims. Spike lunges, his bones aimed at Troy's heart. Yeah? Well, we've got trust issues, friend. Troy ducks the spikes and flips Spike himself onto his back, causing him to howl in pain. Clearly we need some quality bonding time, Troy jokingly remarks. Spike lands hard, the wind being knocked out of him, but Kong is already barreling toward Troy, fists swinging. Troy weaves and bobs as the massive blows demolish concrete pillars around him. Ducking under Kong's haymaker, Troy drives an elbow into the brute's gut. It barely slows Kong down. Troy is grabbed by his shirt and flung across the room, slamming into a locked cafeteria door that explodes off of its hinges from the impact. Kong and Spike prowl toward Troy, ready to finish him. Thinking fast, Troy dumps over a hot soup cauldron from a nearby table. Kong shrieks as the scalding liquid splashes over him. While Kong is distracted, Troy grabs a metal tray and frisbees it at Spike, catching him across the face. Spike staggers back, dazed. Troy capitalizes on the opening, sprinting past his foes toward the exit. He leaps and grabs a hanging pipe using his momentum to kick Spike squarely in the chest, flipping him onto his back before landing in a crouch and dashing out the door. Enraged, Kong charges at Troy like a runaway freight train. Bracing himself, Troy drives his shoulder into Kong's barrel-like chest. It's like slamming into a brick wall padded with pillows. Troy bounces off and stumbles back wincing. You know, compared to you I feel like a gangly teen who never filled out, Troy remarks, trying to shake off the massive blow. His previously pristine uniform was already covered in blood. Kong roars and swings his tree trunk arm, backhanding Troy clear across the room. Troy slams into the concrete wall hard and crumples to the floor in a daze. Yep, definitely felt that one. He groans, blinking to clear the dark spots from his vision. Seeing Kong lumbering closer, Troy scrambles to even get on all fours. He rolls away just as Kong's massive fist pounds a crater into the floor below him. Hey Kong, I'll bring you a peace offering. How about a banana from the cafeteria and we call it even? He says jokingly to try and calm down the rampaging beast. Troy scrambles to his feet, sprinting for the exit door leading to the roof. He fumbles for the key ring swiped from the guard, hands shaking as he sorts through dozens of keys. Kong charges like a raging bull, closing in fast. Troy's fingers slip on the keys, struggling to find the right one. 
He can hear Kong's thundering footsteps matters away. Finally, the lock clicks. Troy flings open the door, dives through, and kicks it shut behind him just as Kong's massive body thuds against the other side. Frantically, Troy presses his body against the heavy door and locks it. Kong is pounding furiously against it, the metal buckling. Troy is unsure as to how long it will stay closed. Troy dashes up the stairs, slipping the keys into his pocket as Kong's enraged roar echoes from below. Keys jangling in his pocket, Troy takes the stairs two at a time. The emergency lights cast an eerie red glow over the concrete stairwell as he ascends rapidly toward the roof. In the distance, he can hear the muffled sounds of the continuing riot and chaos unleashed within the facility. Troy bursts through the heavy rooftop access door, immediately assaulted by pouring rain and fierce winds. In the darkness, spotlights from circling helicopters slice through the stormy skies, strafing over the compound grounds. Far below, Troy can see armed guards scrambling across muddy yards, trying to contain the spreading upheaval. Armored trucks careen wildly, mixing up the gravel left behind them. The choppers sweep low, rotor blades slicing through the rain. Shielding his eyes from the spotlights, Troy peers out, looking beyond the compound's perimeter. For miles in every direction, dense forests of oak, maple, and birch trees surround the remote facility. This had been Troy's only world for the past decade, deep in rural Ohio, hidden from the outside world. Tonight, these dark woods promise potential refuge if he can escape the Pearly Gates compound. Troy moves swiftly, scanning the rooftop for anything to aid his escape. The trees beckon below, waving in the storm's fury. The rain pelting his skin, Troy spots a coil of rope left by workers near the rooftop door. This is it, his chance at escape. Troy's heart pounds as he focuses his mind, preparing to use the unique ability he was born with. Matter recycling. Anything inside of Troy's body can be deconstructed, then reconstituted by opening the pores of his skin and reshaping it into new forms, but only if he holds the blueprints in his mind. This was why Troy relentlessly studied weapon designs on his cell walls, etching them into memory. This is his gift, the power to deconstruct the world around him and rebuild it into whatever he needs to survive. The ability that got him locked up in this place over a decade ago, after it first manifested. The ability Pearly Gates tried to control and suppress, until tonight when Troy finally breaks free. Troy quickly consumes the entire length of coarse rope. He visualizes the fibers separating and rearranging as they pass through his system. He focuses his mind on pulling all the metal from his bloodstream and experimented on kidneys in order to create a metal hook at the end. Moments later, Troy regurgitates the rope out through his pores, fused into a makeshift grappling hook. Gripping the hook tightly, Troy scans for the perfect escape route. A helicopter emerges from the stormy night skies, spotlights blazing as it circles the compound perimeter. Troy waits a split second for the chopper to align directly overhead before making his move. With flawless timing, he whips the grappling hook upward. It latches firmly onto the helicopter's landing skid with a resounding clang Troy can hear over even the storm's fury. Not hesitating, Troy leaps off the roof's edge, Rope clenched tight as he swings outward in a wide arc. Bullets pepper the rooftop's edge just as Troy's feet leave the gravel. With perfect precision, honed from years of training, mixed with a bit of luck, Troy releases the line of the grappling hook at the apex of the swing. He sails through the rainy night sky in a graceful arc, arms spread wide, feeling liberation for the first time in years. Getting to enjoy the rain for one brief moment as his descent begins to quicken, Troy's hands latch onto a sturdy tree branch jutting from the forest's edge. In one smooth motion, he lowers himself down, lands on the ground with a roll, and begins running as hard and as fast as he can. With every step, his heart begins beating faster and faster, pumping adrenaline through his entire body as his mind pictures one thing. Revenge.